Tina, today, really tough day for the state of Arizona. Ten years ago, 19 Granite Mountain hotshots were killed while fighting the Yarnell Hill fire. The fire and the tremendous loss really changed lives, of course, and the community forever. So Colton, all morning long, is joining us from Prescott, where later on a public memorial ceremony will be held. Good morning, Colton. What's the, I know there's people out and about, a few of them, even this early in the morning. What's the mood like? Yeah, good morning, Tessa. Good morning, Scott. Uh, I spoke with one guy who said that it's always a somber time of year, right? He says he comes out to these memorial services every year they have them. And uh, even speaking with uh, one of the fathers of the hotshot members who lost his life, uh, he says it's very hard. It's like ripping a Band-Aid off a wound every single year. Uh, and that was uh, Danny Parker, who we spoke with earlier. Now, we are in Prescott, as you mentioned, at 3 o'clock is when they're going to have that ceremony. But Yarnell is about 30 miles uh, southwest of us here, and uh, we all remember how devastating that fire was. Uh, more than a hundred homes were also lost. So we spoke with members of the Arnell community, and they shared with us what their experience was on that day in June of 2013. This is Barb's story. It was the scariest time of my life, I'll tell you. <laughs> Barb Schlegel lives in Yarnell and was one of many forced to abandon her home 10 years ago as a raging fire came towards her town. I saw it going to People's Valley and I thought, I hope everybody's out of there, you know, and then the next thing it's coming to us. Many we spoke with described it as happening within the blink of an eye. It was a wall-to-wall -wall cars leaving and the smoke was coming down over the highway as we went down. Barb was evacuated for a week and when she came back, she lost four structures on her property. It broke four windows in the house and it didn't get in the house. It came right up to the front. It burnt a pot on the patio. The plant was fine, but the pot melted. The time following the fire was devastating. The loss of life and property, hard to comprehend. You can't describe it really because the fact that they, we'd lost 19, it, 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 it was unbelievable. How could all of those people go at the same time. It was heartbreaking. But in that darkness, a sign of hope. And when we came back, everything was gray and the trees were all burnt and black. And it was very depressing. But all of a sudden, these sunflowers seemed to pop out of nowhere. Nobody planted them, they just came up. That was the only time sunflowers like that bloomed in Yarnell with such vibrance. It brought joy. It, it made you feel like there is hope. There's going to be hope here after all. Now, Barb, they're looking for that silver lining. Uh, Scott uh, and uh, Tess, uh, one of the things that she said that she really holds really close to her heart uh, is an ornament. It, it was uh, donated from the people here in Prescott, a whole bunch of Christmas decorations. And she says the ornament that she really uh, cherishes is one that was made by Grant McKee's father. He was one of the uh, fallen hotshots. Uh, she says that she keeps it on her mantle at home and it just reminds her of the significance of just looking uh, you know, at that silver lining, that the community right. was there for her and keeping people's memories alive.